Hey there, Nick Chitakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to do variable interpolation in the brand new HEEX template engine that was released with Phoenix 1.6, which by the way, was just released on September 24th, 2021. So congrats to the Phoenix and Elixir team for that. Now, I do have this open source repo on GitHub that has an example dockerized Phoenix application. If you've watched some videos in the past, you know that I do have example apps for many different frameworks. So naturally, when I noticed that Phoenix 1.6 came out, I really wanted to update from 1.5 to 1.6. And really, uh, that update process was not too bad. It took me about half an hour, and I have that all rolled up here into one commit. So I'll leave a link to that one in the description if you want to check it out. But I did get really stuck when it came to doing variable interpolation inside of HEEX templates. And by the way, this guide here does give you the rundown on what HEEX is. Basically, you don't need to use it, but it is moving forward going to be the preferred template engine for using Phoenix uh, with both live view and regular like dead views, if you want to call them that. But this video is not going to be focused on HEEX specifically of why you should use it and its features. But I do think it's worth pointing out really quick here uh, how it works at a very high level. Uh, because also, I'm not the professional on this one. I only read the guide here. But basically, if you have a regular, uh, you know, paragraph tag like this or a div or anything, and you want to, you know, get access to some variable here or run some expression, you can use the regular EEX template tags for that one. And that is the way to go. Like you wouldn't use HEEX template tags here. But if you're working inside of a, an actual attribute of an existing element like this one, where let's say you have a div and you have a class and maybe you have you know a class name and a variable, if you try to use the EEX template tag here, then the new HEEX template compiler is gonna throw an error and it recommends or suggests that you do this instead, right? You use the new squiggly bracket syntax, which is the new syntax for HEEX. And then also notice here that there's no quotes because this will actually get expanded out to using quotes. Like it's gonna take care of all that for you. But this example really helped me out, you know, to figure out when I should use the squiggly brackets versus the, the regular EEX brackets here. But it didn't help me out when I had something like uh, a couple of different classes that I have listed out as a string, like working with tailwind. And we're gonna look at some code very soon, by the way. But then, you know, at the very end, maybe one of the one of the classes is a variable name. So basically, how do you do string interpolation inside of this? And uh, yeah, that's where I got stuck on. And before we look at the code again real quick, I just want to give a shout out to Jose Valim, the creator of Elixir, because he helped me out really fast and it was really amazing, actually. So after spinning my wheels for quite some time, I just ended up asking a question in IRC. And within five minutes, Jose answered my question. He, well, he asked me to, you know, give an exact example of what I was trying to do. Then he answered the question very fast. I got a solution in a couple of minutes. And just a few minutes after that, he actually pushed up a patch here to live view, which is where the HEEX template engine code is. And now there's an improved error message that actually goes over the solution here of how to do variable interpolation in case you want to mix strings and a variable. So that's really awesome. Like the turnaround time of that was uh, remarkably fast. So by the time that you watch this video, maybe this error message will be in the actual compiler. So you'll be able to see how to do it without even watching this video. But you know, you might be thinking like, Nick, why don't you just read the compiler message? It tells you how to do it. But I just want to say like a print, you know, this wasn't there at the time of when I did the update, but now it is thanks to Jose. So cool. So yeah, this application here is up and running. This is the result of cloning down this repo. Let's look at some code here and basically go over like how I arrived at the solution or, you know, just using HEEX in general here. So uh, let's go to the app HEEX template here, which is going to basically print out a specific uh, flash message, depending on if it's an error or an alert or whatever. You know, I have this loop set up for that one. And this is the example of where I'm using HEEX. I know the, the syntax highlighting with Vim is a little bit broken here. I don't even understand like how it thinks that's a Mason file. I don't even know what that is. But yeah, eventually I guess uh, Vim syntax files will be supported for HEEX, but let's ignore that for now. Uh, this line is the only thing that's really important here. But yeah, notice how we're inside the attribute of something. So we need to use HEEX template tags here. And also notice here too, like we're outside of an attribute, we're just inside of a paragraph so we can use the EEX template tag here. But yeah, notice here, a couple hard coded strings here for Tailwind, except for the class name. And the class name is actually coming from this helper method that I have set up here, which is going to be flash class. I'll just show you two real quick. It's it's really super simple. Uh, it's just a view helper that takes in a string and it just has a case on that one. And if it's like info, then we're going to do blue and then success is green. So basically we're just going to show different alert messages depending on you know what type of uh, flash message it is. And I'll show you a flash message in a second here. But yeah, that's what we're doing here to get this class here, which ends up being in there. So yeah, this will just result to like BG, you know, red 500 or whatever color that was here to to show the correct one. Nice. But before I got here, so what I tried to do on my own before asking anyone for help was, you know, I had all this set up here and I'm thinking like, okay, well, you know, maybe I can just like quote the whole thing like this and then 
uh, put the quote outside of there. And I didn't even think to use variable interpolation like that. I just figured like, okay, well, you know, maybe I can just like drop something like this. Actually, I didn't even have the quote there. Yeah, this is how it started where I'm like, okay, got my regular string here. There's all my text. Like, can I just drop it in like that? Like, why wouldn't that work? And again, like, you know, I sort of know why it works now. Like it actually has to be like in control of the entire attribute, the H-E-X part. But yeah, this just like actually literally just output like squiggly class and then and squiggly there, it didn't actually get the variable. So yeah, and I guess the takeaway is like, it's it's interesting because actually, let me go back to, I'll go to a different page here, like the home one. So page, home, EEX. So again, templating is still a little bit screwy. Uh, I'll just set the file type to HTML for now. There we go. But it's interesting about this, like if you had a regular EEX template like this and you just did hello world, then uh, uh, if I can actually quote things correctly, then Going back to the page here, we can see hello world totally works fine, right? But in my mind, before I even went down this journey of updating, I didn't even think to break down this to like that degree where it's so obvious now because it's like, well, if an EEX template tag looks like this and it supports using a string, you know, why why can't we just do this instead? Like it should totally work. Like what's the difference? The only difference is like, you know, the opening tag and the closing tag, but there's still tags like it should totally work. But yeah, and by the way, this also works with variable interpolation. Like if I were to make a new variable here called like, hey, or something like that, and just put like world uh, on this one. And then, you know, I just wrap this in like a hey like this, and this should now say hello world or yeah, there we go. But now we're using variable interpolation. But, you know, let me remove that one. We'll go back to this other page here the, the where the flash message is and it's the same exact thing applied so yeah um, that was really important for me at least to like get the mental association of yes we are dealing with something new but it's still like elixir under the hood and really not that much has changed because you know variable interpolation like this at the elixir level will work here as well but now let me just show you a quick example of this thing actually working here so if i go to the page controller then this is actually not set up to use uh, a pipe here because they're you know i'm not really doing anything besides rendering so i didn't want to use a pipe there but let's say we do con and then what am i doing um i need to put flash uh, let's say error this time like, oops, it broke, if I can type. And then what else do we need to do? Uh, we need to render, and we're gonna render home.html, and then what are we gonna do? Well, all of these things get passed through here to the home template. I think this goes up here. Uh, it's not the prettiest looking formatting. You know, I'm sure if I ran mixed format on that, it would look a lot nicer, but technically this should still work. And there we go, like we get our flash message here uh, for the error one, right? So if I go back to here and I change that to be info, then this is going to be blue, I think. Is it going to be blue? It is going to be blue. So yeah, this is all it working, right? Variable interpolation is working with the new H-E-E-X template tags and uh, life is good basically. So yeah, that's it for this one. So with that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps a lot. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out there. You know, again, I'm not a professional with HEEX. I literally just updated this like a few hours ago, but I figured now's a great time to make a video because, you know, it really was a pain point that I had. And here is a solution uh, that I came up with based on it being the solution because that's how HEEX works. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.